Praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Lord of the heavens and the earth. And we ask him to send his peace and blessings upon our master Sayyiduna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Upon his blessed family, his loyal companions and all of those who followed after with excellence up until the day of standing. Ameena, ameena, ameen. Thereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an al-Kareem, he says, وَمَا مِن دَابَّةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ رِزْقُهَا There isn't an animal, there isn't a creature, there isn't a beast upon the earth except that its provision, its rizq, its sustenance is upon Allah. وَيَعْلَمُ مُسْتَقَرَّهَا وَمُسْتَوْدَعَهَا And Allah is well aware of all of the affairs of all of the beings and all of the creatures that Allah has created. Now this verse of the Quran is extremely important to the believing people at all times and in particular in these days and times that we live in. We as human beings, we love reassurance and in the modern day people love insurance. Why they love insurance is because they feel if we lose out on anything, our insurances will back us up. If we lose out on anything, our insurances will back us up. What we have to remember is our only insurance is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is our insurer. He is our guardian and he is the one who has taken it upon himself to look after us and to maintain us. The scholars of Islam have said there are two blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that no being, no creature ever miss out on. Anything that is in existence has the blessings, two blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number one, ni'matul ijadi. The first is the blessing of being in existence. For if it wasn't for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, me and you and all of the world and every beast and creature upon this planet, in this cosmos, would not exist. We didn't have a choice of coming into this world. We didn't decide the day that we were born. That was decided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we were in our mother's wombs, there was no way of us attaining our rizq except through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's provision. That provision of Allah's was such a provision that no human mind can fathom and understand how a child in the mother's womb is sustained and maintained, but it's done by Allah. Why is it done by Allah? Because Allah said in the Quran, it is upon Allah, He has taken charge, He has given assurance that He will give you rizq. This is the first, ni'matul ijad. Our existence is a blessing of Allah's. If He didn't want to bring us into existence, we are ja'iz al-wujud. Our existence is possible. Allah wanted it, so we are. If He didn't want, we wouldn't have been. Whereas, the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what? Is wajibul wujud. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's existence is absolutely necessary, absolutely important. Allah's existence is the absolute. Allah's existence is the only real existence that exists without needing anything or anybody. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Ikhlas, he said, Allahu samad He is a samad He is not in need of anything or anybody. Yet, everything and everybody is in need of Allah. Allah said, Ala Allahi rizquha. Rizq is upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He provides it. Of course, He wants us to go out and seek it. He wants us to go out and work for it. But He wants us to be assured that He will provide it. He wants us to be assured that He will give it to us, subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the first, ni'matul ijad. Our existence is dependent 
upon Allah's mashi'ah, upon Allah's will, upon Allah's irada, upon Allah's qudra. Number two, ni'matul imdad. The second blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that no being in existence misses out on ever is the blessing of imdad, which is the blessing of continuous, ongoing sustenance and rizq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with all beings in existence. What does that mean? That means if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was to cease and stop giving us rizq, if he was to stop and cease our existence upon this planet in creation, would we be able to continue? No. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives anybody death and creates death for anybody, can that person say, I want to live on for a few moments? Can that person say, I want to go and earn for a few moments? No. Why? Because ni'matul imdad is set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He subhanahu wa ta'ala gives madad, he gives provision, he gives rizq, and he does that all the time. For example, during our day, when we are awake, when we are active, we see that we go out to work and we earn. We see that we prepare our food and we cook it and we eat it. These matters may make us forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That in reality, if Allah didn't allow me to go out and earn, I would not be able to earn. If Allah didn't give me the tawfiq and give me the ability and give, ennoble me that I'm able to stand and prepare my food, I wouldn't have been able to do it. Yet, when we are asleep at night and our eyes are closed, who is maintaining us then? Who is caring for us then? Allah said in the Quran, قُلْ مَنْ يَكْلَأُكُمْ بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ Allah said, قُلْ Say, announce, inform them, O beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam مَنْ يَكْلَأُكُمْ بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ Who is it that is taking care of you? بِاللَّيْل During the night, وَالنَّهَارِ And in the daytime. The scholars have said many things about this verse. Number one, the word kala'ah is a very beautiful word. Kala'ah. What type of care is kala'ah? Allah said, Qul man yakla'ukum. Yakla'ukum comes from kala'ah. What type of care is this? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to make a dua. He used to make a dua and he used to ask Allah. Allahumma kla'ni ka kala'atika lil walid. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to make a dua and he used to say, Oh Allah, take care of me the way you take care of a newborn baby. Of a newborn baby. Now tell me, most of us are fathers, there are mothers, how delicate is a baby child, newborn baby? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa used to turn to Allah and say, Allahumma kla'ni ka kala'atika lil walid. Oh Allah, take care of me the way you take care of a newborn baby. Allah said, Qul man yakla'ukum. Who is it that takes such delicate care of you? Bilayli, at night. Why did Allah say night first? The scholars have said, the reason why Allah said night first is because that is a time when we really can't take care of ourselves. That is a time when we don't know in the morning whether we will be alive or we will, we will be dead. That is the time that we don't know whether I will be up on my bed when I wake up or will I be off my bed when I wake up. <laughs> Isn't it from the miracles of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he bestows upon people that when they wake up in the morning, they still find themselves on their beds? How? They were not able to take care of themselves. But Allah said, قُلْ مَنْ يَكْلَأُكُمْ بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ Who is it that takes care of you in the depths of the night when you're asleep, when you're conscious, when you're not conscious, when you're not thinking, who is it that takes care of you? 
one nahar and during the day who is it that is taking delicate care of you none other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah takes care of us in the depths of the night and during the day and from Allah's care towards all of us all of humanity and all of mankind is وَمَا مِن دَابَّةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ رِزْقُهَا There isn't a beast, there isn't a creature, there isn't a being in existence except that it, its rizq is upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The scholars have said, in this verse, Allah did not say the rizq of the believing people is upon Allah. He did not say the rizq of the Muslims is upon Allah. He did not say, oh, those who pray to me, their rizq is upon me. He didn't say, those who are obedient to me, their rizq is upon me. Rather, he said, every beast, every creature, everything in existence, I will take care of it. I will provide its rizq. This is assurance from the creator of the heavens and the earth. This is assurance from the one who has the treasures of the heavens and the earth and beyond that he will look after our risk. He will take care of our risk. He took care of our risk when we were in our mother's wombs. He took care of our risk when we came out of our mother's wombs. He takes care of our risk when we are sleeping upon our beds and we don't know what we are doing or not doing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes care of us at all times. Sometimes when we are young, our parents take care of us. But it's possible that sometimes people lose their parents. Those who lose their parents, who takes care of them? They have to be reassured. Parents are a means. They are, they are a sabab of your care. In reality, Allah takes care of you. When we grow up, we might have those who are looking after us, taking care of us. But in reality, we must know only Allah takes care of us. We might be in a job today, for some reason or the other, we might lose that job tomorrow. Is it the end of the world? No, it's not because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will still provide. If he has closed one door upon you, don't worry, he can open so many more doors upon you. Risk is only upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our teacher, the great Allama of Damascus, Shaykh Muhammad Saeed Ramadan al Buti, Rahmatullah Ali, he used to tell us this story of a young man who moved into a new area. The people recognized this person is new. So someone went to him in the masjid and said, Son, I see that you're new in the area. He said, Yes, I am. He said, I want to know if you have enough provision, enough risk, enough food for yourself. He said, Alhamdulillah, I have enough, Allah is providing. I have enough, Allah is providing. This man in the masjid said to him, No, no, son, I want to know, where are you getting this rizq from? If I can help you in any way, I will help you. And the young man who was intelligent, he said, Allah provides. He said, Allah provides. The next day, the man in the masjid said the same to him. The young man said, Allah provides. The day after, the man insisted. He said, tell me, where are you getting your provisions and your rizq from? If you, so that if I think that you need help, I will help you. And the young man said, Allah provides. This happened for days and days and days until the young man, he was upset at this man who was asking him and not taking his response into consideration. His response was, Allah provides. But the man in the masjid wasn't taking that to consideration. So what did the, man, the young man say? The young man said to him, Okay, today I'm going to tell you a different story. I've been telling you every single day, Allah provides, but it seems for some reason, this is not good enough for you. I'm going to tell you a different story today. He said, at the end of the street, there is a non-Muslim man who doesn't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He comes and gives me food every day. He comes and gives me food every day. The man in the masjid said, Son, Alhamdulillah, now you have given me comfort. The young man said to him, If now I have given you comfort, I tell you that you must repeat all of your prayers because you have no confidence in Allah. Because you have no confidence in Allah. 
You can lose your job, you can lose your parents, you can lose your family, you can lose your spouse, you can lose your children, but you will never lose Allah's assurance. Allah will provide your risk. The world turns its cycles. The days and nights of the world are a cycle. What does Allah say in the Quran? Allah says, وَتِلْكَ الْأَيَّامُ نُدَاوِلُهَا بَيْنَ النَّاسِ Allah says, وَتِلْكَ الْأَيَّامُ نُدَاوِلُهَا بَيْنَ النَّاسِ They are the days that we circulate amongst people. One day the world is living in luxury. The next day the world is living in austerity. One day the world is living in rich, richness. The next day the world is crying poverty. Our state with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, he was the greatest man to walk upon this planet. The people who were immediately around him, his sahaba, they were categorically the greatest people Allah ever sent to the earth. Yet, we see that they were dismissed from their homes. Their properties were taken from, taken from them. Their businesses were looted. But they didn't give up upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were content. They were pleased. They could sleep at night and say, Raditu billahi rabba, I am well pleased as Allah to be my Lord. What we have to understand in this world that's around us, that circulates around us out there, that is now worried, that is now worried about this party coming into power or that party coming into power, that is now worried about this leader coming into power or that leader coming to, into power. The believing people should know that on the day of judgment Allah said we will call all people after their leaders and after their imams. So if we choose the people of the world to be our leaders and imams then we must get be prepared to stand behind them on the day of judgment. Yet, if we choose the Messenger of Allah and His way of life to be our Imam, then we must know and be reassured, regardless of who is in power and who is not in power, Allahi rizquha, Allah has given us assurance that our rizq is upon Allah. Our rizq is upon Allah. If the people of the world are falling into depression, if they are falling into anxiety, if they are having nervous breakdowns because of the austerity of the, that the country is coming into, then the believing people must stand steadfast in following the footsteps of the Messenger of Allah who said, I will eat one day and go hungry another day. I will thank Allah and I will be patient for Allah. That's the way of the believing people, not falling for the slogans and what they hear from here and there. This is number one. Number two, people are speaking about the rise of Islamophobia after last night. People are worried. People have anxiety. People are thinking, what shall we do? And the Muslims, the young of them especially, the men of them and the women of them, the teenagers of them, the females of them and the males of them are thinking, now, do we have to disguise ourselves that we're not Muslim? Do we have to hide away our identity? Do we have to move away from people? Perhaps I might need to change my name to disguise it as if I'm not a Muslim. This is a serious issue. This issue of Islamophobia is no new issue to Islam and the Muslims. Why? We are of great value because we have faith in Allah. And that is by the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, he said, the value of the believing person is greater in the sight of Allah than the blessed Kaaba and everything in its vicinity. We have great value with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. But the value of the Messenger of Allah is much greater than all of us. If somebody points their fingers towards us, if somebody insults us and abuses us, that's wrong. It shouldn't happen. Yet we should take example in the Messenger of Allah, who was the greatest man to walk upon the earth. He was the most beloved to Allah. Yet people stoned him in a ta'if. They made his blood shed. They broke his sandal. The, his blessed armor got stuck in his noble face in the battle of Uhud. Above all of that, 
the city of Makkah in which he was born, in which he grew up, in which he married, in which he had children, in which he was given revelation, in which he went to the night journey of Isra and Mi'raj. He was dismissed from that city at the age of 53 when his blessed beard was becoming white. He had to go in the bewilderment of the Arabian desert. But yet he did not ever forget that Allah is still with him. All of this Islamophobia against the person of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Yet he stands his ground He doesn't give up He stands his ground and he doesn't give up This is the identity of a Muslim That the world will go against you The world going against you is a sign from Allah that you're upon the truth Because the truth has always been opposed by falsehood from day one, all of the prophets had to migrate and leave from their lands and move on. We have to teach ourselves. We have to make our young ones know. We have to make them know that the identity of a Muslim is valuable regardless of what people say. Many people have come to me and said, I feel like changing my Muslim name. Many women have said, I feel like taking off the hijab. Many Muslims have said, I fear for the houses of Allah, the masjids. I fear that these beautiful masjids will be attacked. My dear brothers and sisters, I ask all of you, what is your response to that? If your children say to you, now the masjids will be attacked, what is your response to that? Put up cameras, get security guards in, is that our response? Is that how low we have become? Our response is, if we want to protect the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if, if we want to protect these monumental structures that our fathers and forefathers built with their, with their hard works and efforts in the factories and the foundries, there is only one way of doing that, that is by attending the prayers in the masjid the way we attend Jum'ah in the masjid. If our attendance in the masjid is empty, then that means we have, as Muslims have given open ground to those who want to attack our masjid and say, go ahead and attack it. Nobody's going in anyway. They're all asleep at Fajr time. You can go and attack their masjids. My dear brothers and sisters, if we don't wake up for Fajr and come to the masjid, and if one of the old men who's got two walking sticks in his hand, and his back is crooked, and he can barely walk, is walking down the street to go and pray Fajr in the masjid, and somebody abuses him and insults him, and somebody attacks the house of Allah, then the only people who are responsible are the Muslims who are in their beds and not waking up for Fajr. If our masjids are attacked in winter time, when Isha is early and Maghrib is early, and the night is long, and people don't come out of their homes and attend the house of Allah for prayer, then we have given open license to the people of the world, go and attack them, go and loot them, because we don't want to go in them anyway. My dear brothers and sisters, we are living in a difficult time. And what the difficulty of this time is, that if we don't stand up to our religious responsibility towards the houses of Allah, towards our children, then it's very, very difficult to see Islam continue in our blood and in our skin, even if we are brown. It's very hard to see that these masjids that are so beautiful today, that tomorrow they might have for sale signs on them. Why? Because we collectively have made a choice not to attend the masjid. This is serious. Do you know how serious Fajr in the masjid is? We make slogans that we love the Messenger of Allah. Listen to this hadith. And if you are not frightened by this hadith, then go and recheck your iman. The Prophet wasallam, he came for Fajr in the masjid. He stood upon his mat and he looked into the audience. The audience wasn't me and you. The audience were the Sahaba of Rasulullah. 
He looked into the audience and do you know what he said? He said, I wish to leave somebody standing upon my mat, my musalla, and I want to go out into the streets of Medina and burn the houses of those who have not come for Fajr. Burn the houses of those who have not come for Fajr. This beautiful structure of a masjid, this brick and mortar is part of the honor of Islam. But this structure and this brick and mortar, its beauty will never be complete until the believing people start to attend the house of Allah. Make a promise with yourselves for the sake of your children, for the sake of Islam. Make a promise between yourselves and Allah that I am going to pray every prayer in the masjid. Make a promise that I'm going to get off my comfortable bed and come out to protect the house of Allah by praying in it. Believe me, if masjids are attacked, don't cry, don't moan, don't say there was no security, don't say there was, there was cuts in the police force. Because before the police force, before the security, Rasulullah made all of you responsible to come and pray Fajr in the masjid to protect the house of Allah. If we want to die and our children are saying, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, we have to show our children we take pride in Islam. We have to show our children we take honor in the houses of Allah. How many of us on the weekend when our children are not in school, how many of us, the way we take them to the city center to do their shopping, the way we take them to Star City to have their leisure, the way we take them to the parks for cricket and football, how many of us say to our boys and girls and our children, son, putter, daughter, let's go to the masjid and pray zuhr. Let's sit in the house of Allah. How many of us do that? Okay, our children are in schools now. Tomorrow is Saturday. <coughs> when do we ever think, I'm, I want to take my children to the house of Allah? I want to sit with them in the masjid. I want to show them the honor of Islam. My dear brothers and sisters, if we don't do this, then the likelihood of Islam continuing in our brown blood and flesh has become very weak. It's our responsibility to be proud of Islam. Allah said, وَلِلَّهِ الْعِزَّةُ وَلِرَسُولِهِ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ Izzah is for Allah and His Messenger and for the believing people. But which believing people? The believing people who want to come to the masjid. The be believing people who want to take pride and honor in Islam. How can we take pride and honor in Islam if our masjids are empty? How can we take pride and honor in Islam if we don't bring our children to the masjid for Zahar on Saturday, for Asr on Sunday, when they are absolutely free? We have to rethink and we better start thinking very quickly because the time is ticking and days are moving and we have to return to our religion and we have to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So remember our rizq is upon Allah. Nobody can take it away from us regardless of what happens to the world, number one. And number two, the protection of our religion against Islamophobia is through us being proud of Islam, is through us attending the houses of Allah and demonstrating to the world that we will protect the masjids by coming and praying in the masjids, by inhabiting the houses of Allah, by giving life to the houses of Allah. Allah said in the Quran, Innama ya'muru masajid Allahi man amana billahi wal yawmil akhir. The only people who inhabit and build the houses of Allah are those who believe in Allah and in the last day. Building the house of Allah doesn't only mean that you put brick and mortar together, it means you start to come and attend the house of Allah and connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.